At first glance, today's object might look a little plain, but it's actually a piece of military history and a piece of women's history. It's also a fashion statement. Hi, I'm Emma, and today we're talking about a Wade's uniform. During World War II, women served in many branches of the armed forces, including the Navy, under the name Women Accepted for Volunteer Emergency Service, or WAVES for short. Before they went to their posts around the country, many WAVES trained at Smith College in Northampton. While they were at Smith, they took courses on naval ships and history, did exercise drills on the Smith College playing fields, and learned essential naval skills, like how to recognize an enemy plane and how to organize the crew of a ship. Waves trained in the same skills as the men, but they faced the same systemic obstacles that they had before the war. For instance, waves were not eligible to receive the same benefits as men in the Navy, the idea being that they did not have families to support. African American waves faced the additional burden of institutional racism as well as sexism. Initially, they were not allowed into the unit, and when they were, they couldn't be promoted to officer. There were some reports of problems between the Waves and the Smith College students, but overall, the relationship seemed to be a good one. Some Smith College students even tied red, white, and blue ribbons to the handlebars of their bicycles to indicate that any Waves could borrow them without asking. Now that we have some backstory, let's talk about this uniform. The Waves uniform was pretty special because unlike other military uniforms, it wasn't designed by the Navy. It was designed by a fashion designer, Mainbacher. This was a pretty good deal for both sides, and not just because Mainbacher priced his work very extravagantly at one US dollar. It was a great deal because it was good publicity for the Navy to have a fashion designer design one of their uniforms, and it was also good for Mainbacher because designing this uniform made him a household name in places where he had never been known before. Mainbacher didn't design this uniform alone. He had input from the Navy's Women's Advisory Council. However, he didn't take their main suggestion, more pockets. I'm sure a lot of women buying clothes today can sympathize. This coat is also set apart from some of the other uniforms in our collection because of how carefully it was made, possibly because of Mainbacher's involvement. The stitching is very small and the hems are very even. And even though this was worn throughout World War II, it shows very little evidence of mending. The most distinctive feature of the Waves uniform was this unique collar. Now, let's talk about the pocket situation on these clothes. As I mentioned, Mainbacher did not take the advice of the Women's Council, and it shows. Looking at the jacket, it looks as though there are two awkwardly placed pockets right next to the lapel. In fact, those are not functional pockets. They are just pocket flaps sewn onto the front of the jacket. The actual pocket opening is on the inside of the jacket, right above the breast, a place that might be awkward to reach during work, particularly if the jacket was buttoned. The reason for this is probably that Mainbacher did not want to interfere with the lines of the garment by having people store big items on their person. This is probably also why the jacket does not have any pockets in the hip area, and the two pockets on the skirt are kind of up front so that it won't interfere with the line of the woman's hips. The coat must have been a welcome addition to the Waves uniform, as it has two very deep pockets. Though the Waves uniforms were mostly identical, the women who wore them were not. Each one of them has a unique and interesting story, and I'm really excited to share with you the story of the woman who wore this uniform, Margaret Clifford. That's going to be the subject of our next video, so stay tuned.